Okay, so today for estimation, we have two jars we're looking at, and we're going to have some clues about those two jars. So uh, before you see the clues, I want you to try to make an estimate of how many you think are in each vase. Your estimate today is going to be two different numbers. And as the clues appear on the next page, you're going to have a chance to narrow down your estimate based on the clues. So clue one. The combined number of objects in the two vases is less than 100. So when I take what I think is in the green vase and I add it to the multicolored vase, both numbers together are less than 100. Clue two, one of the vases is holding exactly twice as many objects as the other vase. So whichever vase you think is holding the smaller amount, take that number and do it times two to get the other vase. The sum of the numbers of the two vases is an even number. So if I add together what I think is in the green vase, plus what's in this together, the number is even. The two numbers are made of four unique digits, so it can't be 22 and 44 because I can't use the same number more than once. It could be 21 and 42. Nope, it can't because I would use two twice. You have to have all four numbers. Each digit is a different number. And the digit five is not included in either number. Okay, so there are the five clues. You should have enough now to determine the answer. Are you ready to see what's in the green vase? 32. That means 64 in the multicolored vase. Okay, so I'm gonna share a different screen so that I can talk you guys through some things that have been happening. Here we go. Uh, this week, our topic is like terms. And if you have not gone to vocabulary and watched the video and done the two activities there, please do that first. Then I'm going to expect you to go into Google Classroom and work on the, um, the Google document that I left there for you. If you, um, in vocabulary, take the quiz and your score is lower than 80, I'm going to reset it for you so you get a chance to do better. Okay. Now, if we were in class, I would be showing you this video. And I'm going to just show it to you for a few minutes. Um, and then I'm going to share this video with you later in Google Cloud. Well, if you're watching this later, you're seeing this already. This link is in Google Classroom. And the link that you see will get you to this video that we're going to watch about a minute of together. And then um, after this video, you can go and there's two more videos over here on the left, leading down to this pencil with a practice. That check mark is there because I'm logged in and I've done the activity before. But this is practice, this prep pencil is practice, then there's another video and another practice. These are really great things to do for you to get really solid in your understanding of our topic for today, which is um, combining like terms. And this activity is also um, the same topic as what we're going to work on next week. It's so important for you to understand how to combine like terms before going on to eighth grade math or algebra. Okay, so let's watch about a minute of this together.
Okay, I'm going to stop from there and I'm going to take you to um, my document camera. Okay, so the idea there is that they were using pictures of the actor Chuck Norris. I'm going to use the variable X. And if you notice what they showed is that that was X plus X plus X plus X plus X. This two plus this three gave us five X's. So that's how we combine like terms. And what makes us a like term is that they both have an X as its variable. I like to think of these as like families of variables and the last name of this family is X. Now I could also have something that looks like this. 3X squared plus 3X plus 2X plus 5x squared. Now when people are first learning this and they look at this, they think, well, they have all x's, so I can take and I can just put them all together. But they're not the same kind of x. This is an x raised to the second power, and this is just an x. It doesn't matter that they both have a 3 in front. What matters is that the x here has a square on it, and this is just a regular x. So if I was combining like terms here, this one matches this one because they both have an x raised to the second power. These two are like terms because they're just an x. So I would rewrite this as 8x squared plus 5x. And I can't combine them any further than that because this is a different variable than this. Even though they both have an x, this one doesn't have a square and this one does. So for clar clarity, let's do one more example together. And if you didn't watch the lesson that I posted on Monday, there is a video there that has, um, first I go through a slideshow of information about things that are happening at Showalter that you might wanna know about. But I also do a lesson using the Google document that you need to work on this week. So please go and at least click through until you see me doing the math part. So this is interesting because this is y squared and this is x squared. And they both have that variable raised to the second power, but this is a y and this is an x, so they are not like terms. These two are like terms. They both have an x raised to the second power. This one does not match those because it's just a plain x. But what I do have is this negative y or two, negative two y squared is a like term with this one. So to get this rewritten, we would end up with negative six y squared. Negative four and negative two would give us negative six y squared plus two plus six is eight x squared plus four x. So when we're combining like terms, we take the coefficient, that's the number in front of the variable, and we just do number operations with them like we would. Like we saw up here, that was two Chuck Norrises plus three Chuck Norrises gave us five Chuck Norrises. It just happened in this case that they have this last name or this variable attached that's next. I can't simplify this any further, and it feels like it's not done, because we want to get down to one little answer, but this answer is an answer with three terms. Term one, term two, term three. Okay, so hopefully that clarifies the work for this week. And I will um, be available for questions. And I hope that you can make our class meeting next week where we'll do a little bit of math together. Let me know if you need help on the work.